student population, the road has much more to offer than meets the eye. Museums, cinemas, theatres, art galleries, this road is a hybrid of arts and culture which represents Manchester. However, over the last few years, the cultural backbone of this road has been rusting away under the weight of the growing student population. People are more interested now in the clubs and bars of Oxford Road rather than its rich cultural heritage. There is little known about the history and culture embedded within the buildings. One must go deeper into the stories behind these buildings to decipher the true nature of the arts and culture on Oxford Road. We visited Manchester Museum. We've got a lot of um, artefacts in here from all over the world, so various uh, facets of science. So it's uh, quite a big, just an educational tool that's quite useful. And, uh, it's a nice bit. Obviously, children and families coming in, but yeah. over, as the term starts, it tends to keep you off and we get uh, more students from university or more visiting adults. But it is, uh, the, the buildings here were university buildings and all the artifacts were donated by uh, the various, um, various nat natural societies in Manchester who had run out of space for yeah. their uh, artifacts, so they donated to the university. Moving to these buildings. Uh, yeah, this the latest wing was. Labyrinth, come in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something they call a groundbreaker. So let me first apologize. Early morning Oxford Road, deserted, hardly anyone around. Most students are probably in bed, hardly any transportation. However, it will soon change in a couple of hours when the hustle and bustle of the working day begins. We ventured down to the Dance House Theatre and interviewed the front house manager to find out more of the history which was officially opened in 1994 by Princess Margaret. Well, it's got a long history of uh, entertainment. It used to have cinemas, um, loads of them. Most of the time into bars now or a derelict. Uh, it has the palace theatre, of course, but I think entertainment's changed on Oxford Road over the like, past 60 years, and now it's more maybe catering for students and bars and eateries. College primarily, the North, it's the Northern Ballet School in the day, and then we, we have um, evening classes. Uh, for dance students, obviously in the evening. And um, then we do a lot of the shows, we do ballets, but we're receiving theatre, so we're just hired by people who then use the theatre for their own events. We get a lot of um, societies, like Chinese society, a lot of student groups who work on their own productions here. The Dance House Theatre Complex extends to some 35,000 square feet and comprises the auditorium, ballet school studios, green room, licensed theatre bar and coffee shop. But that's not the only theatre Oxford Road has. We also have the famous Palace Theatre. Every time I go to the Palace Theatre, the service is brilliant. Uh, the shows are excellent, absolutely excellent. I like Oxford Road because I work at the university anyway. It's, yeah, it's good. I mean, there's always a good variety as well and it's good value for money. Palace Theatre was built as the Manchester Palace of Varieties by Alfred Derbyshire and F.B. Smith in 1891. It is now one of the best equipped and popular theatres outside London, hosting major noticeable shows who have played successful seasons at the theatre, including Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Mary Poppins, Oliver and so on. Hi, my name is Carol Fithian. I'm the Deputy Front of House Manager here at the Palace Theatre. I also do the tours here at the Palace Theatre and at the Opera House, which is a sister venue. Um, I work for ATG. I started out on the bars and as an usher, and I've worked my way up to one of the managers now. Um, Palace Theatre opened in 1891. Um, when we opened, it didn't have a liquor licence. 
there was a, a lot of protesting outside uh, by the church goers at the time that it was going to be a den of iniquity. Um, obviously we got our liquor license because it had been a pretty dull place without the liquor nowadays. Originally it was poor land, it was a timber yard, the Palace Theatre was built on the timber yard next to the Rochdale Canal. Um, opposite was the St Mary's Hospital which is now apartments um, and around and about there were warehouses, cotton warehouses um, along Whitworth Street and Oxford Street. So when they first acquired the land people bought shares for £5 each um, to buy the Palace Theatre and it was bought for £45,000 which wouldn't buy it today unfortunately. Um, we catered to many many audiences obviously originally um, the old time comedians, variety acts. When we first opened it was Cleopatra um, and it was meant to bring in a better crowd but the better crowd weren't appreciative of that kind of show so they brought in a few variety acts to try and increase the customers um, which seemed to go down pretty well with a lot of the patrons and obviously when we first opened we catered for the people with the money in Manchester who liked to sit in the boxes and wave at the poorer people sat in the stalls or up in the top tier and um, you can only imagine the gas lights and the smell and the fumes of, from the bars and the smoke um, yes it had been a joyful place to sit in with the Victorian ladies. Um, ladies didn't actually work at the Palace Theatre until 1915. Obviously because of the First World War there was a lack of young men so that's when ladies first started working here. Um, obviously there's a lot of ladies work here now. There's lots of uh, a big mix of staff, up to 40 staff work in the building and work for the Opera House as well. All quiet again. Oxford Road deserted, Palace Theatre, Dance House Theatre, Manchester Museum, the Corner House, the footage that used to be a cinema. They all go back into obscurity as the students once again start their day-to-day -day voyage. It's a dire shame because the sparkle of these great monuments has once again become hindered by the ignorance and the force of the daily commune. Are we really going to let the arts and culture of Oxford Road continue to decay? Are we really going to let the history be forgotten? All this is up to you. Stuck in her daydream. Been this way since 18, but lately her face seems slowly sinking, wasting, crumbling like pastries. And they scream the worst things in life come free to us, cause we're just under the upper hand. I'm going mad for a couple grams And she don't want to go outside tonight And in a pipe she